are live. So happy Friday, um, Financial Freedom Friday. I'm Peter Myers with Master Your Money Academy, and I am super excited to be joined by Kelsey Russell, a realtor with Russell Real Estate based out of Des Moines, Iowa. And we are going to talk all about the real estate market during COVID-19, investing, um, any tips for first-time home buyers, all that fun stuff um, with real estate. So um, I want to let Kelsey introduce herself, um, but definitely have to share uh, voted best uh, realtor in Des Moines in 2019. So I feel really honored to have you on Financial Freedom Friday. So thanks so much, Kelsey. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I just also want to say, you know, thank you to Peter for, you know, creating this platform where people can learn about effective ways to manage their money, effective ways to invest and just be smart with money. Um, and just for being a great person and connecting people in the community and having me on. So this is exciting for me. It's always fun for me to kind of see, you know, who I can touch through other people's networks and, you know, help educate because that's the real main motivation behind what I do is I don't really care at the end of the day who you work with. I think everything, you know, comes full, full circle for people that do the right thing and educate. So that's kind of, you know, my mission and I love doing these things. So, yeah. yeah. Well, really excited. So um, let's dive right in. So I know you have been super busy, which um, to yeah. me is like, wow, um, really impressive um, with <laughs> real estate markets. So, which is awesome. Yeah. But of course you're busy because obviously you're the best of the best. Um, yeah. But tell me, what are you seeing in the real estate market? I mean, I guess people are buying, selling. Um, what's kind of changed with all the whole coronavirus pandemic, right. all of the low interest rates? Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest thing, like I'll just kind of go through some numbers for the market because I think that's helpful for people to kind of visualize. So at the end of March, we had um, 1,455 pending versus 1,222 pending in March of 2019. So that was up about 200 homes that were, you know, pending under contract at the end of March. Um, and then 932 were closed versus 905 last year in March. So March, we had a better year than last year, more homes sold, which I think people are kind of baffled to hear um, just because there was such a high amount on the market and a few, you know, withdrew and canceled for a while to figure out things with a job situation. And I think that's the biggest thing that I have been kind of echoing to people that are asking, are people buying, are people selling? It's like, yes, with caution. I think the biggest thing to understand is that the people that are selling right now, you know, they need to sell. They're serious about selling. Um, and the people that are buying right now are, you know, hopefully their realtor is making sure that they are really strong buyers. Their job is secure throughout this. But it's kind of just a responsibility for all of us as humans to not put other people through, you know, distress and financial woes if you are out looking and you aren't in a solid position. And I know that there's certain industries where that's hard to know. But that's kind of what I've been telling people. And it's just a pivot of if your job's secure, you know, you can aggressively look right now. You need to be safe with if you're not feeling well, you are not going out. Um, we can do virtual showings. What I've seen is just the amount of homes that we're actually going into is so much lower, you know. So normally you'd see 100% of the houses that you're interested in in person. Most people are only seeing one or two, you know, and a lot of the times, if you're going into a home, the home has all the lights on, all the doors are open, we're not touching anything, we're sanitizing before we go in, we're wearing gloves and masks, we're sanitizing on the way out. So if you need to see homes, if you need to move, you know, there are people that are in a lease that ends May 15th and they needed to be under contract by April, you know, 1st or 7th. So um, there are people where real estate's essential, people always need a place to live, but we just want to be really safe right. and really cautious about it. Um, another interesting fact was just that the median sale price was $4,000 higher um, this year than last year. So, you know, homes are still upticking. An average appreciation in Iowa is probably about 3% per year. So based on homes that have sold right now, you know, that's a little bit lower. That's probably about 2% based on that average sale price. But at the end of the day, homes are still appreciating where other markets are tanking. And it's just something to consider when we're talking about financial freedom and diversifying your wealth. Um, real estate is something that tends to hold really steady. You know, we saw 2008, that's kind of the only time in our immediate history that that hadn't, hold, hadn't held true. But, you know, we came back quickly and you just have to be smart about it. It's just a really good way to diversify your wealth. Um, yeah, and then the other thing, you talked about low interest rates. Yep. Um, I just 
the biggest thing right now for realtors, lenders, anyone in the business is set realistic expectations because interest rates are steadily low, but they're fluctuating hourly. So like I saw a 3% interest rate get locked and then I had someone apply for a pre-approval and you know, the rates were around three, three and 3.125. And then the next day they were 4.1, you know, so they went up, they went up overnight a percent, but then they shift back down. We've also seen investors not even giving rates in some situations just because, you know, they see something on the news, they say, okay, we want to pause. And it's not a, we're scared of everything going on. We're not going to do it. It's just, let's pause. Let's look at our books. Let's see how much we can afford to leverage ourselves right now. Um, So that's the thing, like me as a realtor, just set expectations, you know, don't be out looking if you're not financially stable in your job and, um, you know, don't sell right now if you are wanting the biggest bang for your buck. But if you're ready to sell quickly, it's actually a really good time because there's not a lot on the market, you know, compared to other times. So it just depends on your unique goals. Yeah, um, absolutely. So as far as, I mean, what should people know? I mean, is now the time to be buying? Um, I know I, I just got a text. <laughs> um, and um, so uh, age is working, but um, is interested in buying. So is now the time to be looking? Is it better to wait until the market stabilizes more? I mean, what's considered stable? Right. Um, I mean, we're pretty stable still. We're just seeing a little bit less go on the market. Um, I think the big thing is, it's a good time to buy if, because the rates are so good, you know, if you're, if you are secure with your job, I don't ever want to see someone, you know, buy. And then this continues to go on for two or three months more. And they were banking on, you know, their job coming back to full capacity if they've been cut back on hours or, you know, we don't ever want to buy if you're not kind of feeling good about your financial situation. Um, But if you are, the rates are low. And I just always tell people, if you go, up a percentage you know so if we're at 3.25 right now if you go up to 4.25 you're probably going to be losing about forty thousand dollars of purchasing power so if you're in a threshold where you are looking at a two hundred thousand dollar house you know at a four percent interest rate and you go you get a three percent locked you could look at two hundred forty thousand dollar houses which is going to really really change like what options you have the condition the quality the size so yes it's a good time to buy solely because rates are great but you know, they're going to fluctuate. So you have to kind of set expectations. You have to be in touch with a good lender that is going to respond to you quickly. That's the biggest thing that I've seen um, frustration wise with buyers is, you know, they're not talking to a realtor that they trust. They're not getting in contact with a good lender. um, And they're not getting responses quick enough because lenders are so bogged down with refinances right now. Um, And there's even some lending institutions that are increasing their rates because like the same situation would be a higher rate at their company because they basically don't have the capacity with their lenders to respond to people and get back to people quick enough. So that is really, really key right now. It's just working with a lender that you know is going to, you know, put you as a priority and get back to you when you need to lock your rate. Yeah. So as, as a realtor, I mean, are you helping a lot as far as building out those relationships with lenders or um, is it kind of on you to search out um, different lenders? I know, um, there's differences between credit unions and banks um, and different right. financing options. Right. Um, to me, it's, I prefer, I would say probably 95% of my people come to me first. We go through the process. You know, we go through the whole home buying process. It's normally a 20 minute conversation on the phone or I can do a full, you know, hour consult. But normally we do that 20 minutes first just to talk through, you know, what are your goals? What are your areas, your price range? Because that's going to give me a really good idea of, you know, what lenders, what grants, what programs are going to be best for you. And then I refer over to a lender. If you have your own and it's a family friend or it's someone you trust, that's fine. I'll work with any lender. But I just like to work with people I know and trust because I know that the closing is going to happen on time. I know that they're going to get everything done you know, professionally and quickly, um, if anything comes up throughout the process, but that's normally the process that happens is a lender. You'll reach out to me. We'll talk for 20 minutes. I'll get a grasp on your situation. I'll reach out to a lender, you know, or I'll give you a list of two or three, 
you pick who you want, you reach out to them, they let me know on the financing side, here's the numbers that we're looking at. And I always tell people, you wanna look at what is a comfortable monthly payment for you, not what you're pre-approved for. Because a lot of people are gonna be pre-approved well above what's a comfortable payment. So that's a conversation you know that we'll have on the front end so you know how to talk to that lender and get that comfortable payment. Um, they'll send me a pre-approval letter, or if we're not pre-approved for whatever reason, um, maybe credit score needs to be worked on. Maybe it's normally your credit score, your debt to income ratio, and your savings for a down payment are the only factors that matter in buying a house. Not the only, but those are like the three things that have to be checked in order for you to get pre-approved. Okay. So um, lenders have a program called Rapid Rescore, where basically if your credit score is too low, um, they will say, do X, Y, and Z, pay this bill at this time, and then they run scenarios to say, here's your best plan of attack to get your credit score to, you know, 640, which is the minimum for conventional loans. And they basically tell you exactly what to pay, exactly when to pay it. And if you do it, you know, I can get pre-approved on May 15th, you know? Right, right. Um, so that's a very, very, very valuable tool. Um, and a good reason to talk to me first, we'll kind of figure out what you need to get taken care of um, in order to be pre-approved. And that's the biggest thing. So once you talk with the lender, we'll come back. We'll kind of do that one hour consult. If you've never bought before, it's really nice to just go through and understand the entire process on the front end. Right. Um, and that's, I mean, that's the big thing is just making sure you know you're pre-approved ahead of time. You know where you stand, especially in this market. You know, do not go out and look at houses if you don't know what you're pre-approved for because you're putting other people's families at risk, you know, and other people at risk when you might not even be able to buy what you're wanting to buy. So there's just a lot more precaution. There's a lot more research going on. You know, sometimes people will want to go out and see a house just to get inside and see if they like it before they want to go through pre-approval. Don't do that in this market. It's just, you know, it's just not being smart. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, what is, I mean, as far as other than obviously virtual um, home tours, I'm sure you go in, you kind of videotape or um, whoever the listing agent is. Um, I mean, what else is really changing right now? Or is it kind of business as normal markets? I hear all the being, so I'm assuming that means that it's a good business for you. Uh, and you're definitely staying busy. So, I mean, is that pretty much standard across um, the country? Real estate markets on fire? Um, it is, it's slower. Um, I think there's a lot of pent up energy and that's why I've had a lot of listing appointments, like virtual listing appointments where we do a zoom call. We go over, you know, what is kind of a good price range for your home, what updates you should be doing, you know, while you have this time at home, um, what you need to do in the meantime in order to be ready. Because at the end of the day, we're going to have all these buyers that maybe had a job on hold or maybe had you know, some situate or just weren't ready, you know, maybe their job's fully secure, but they aren't ready in this, you know, pandemic to make a decision or they don't want to be out of their house because they have kids or elderly or at risk at home. Those people, there's going to be so much pent up demand that like we need the supply there to meet it. And so sellers, it's a great time to talk through, you know, what's your estimate. And even if you aren't for sure you want to sell, it's a great time to see like, okay, I've been in my house for five years or three years. What, it, what kind of proceeds can I take away? And that's my biggest thing for, I know people that maybe it's not, they're not thinking about moving for two years. And I see a house as that is perfect for what they're wanting. And I can reach out to them and say, Hey, you know, you could make $40,000 if you sold your house today. And then they're like, yeah, I would like to, do that. you know, so just thinking right. about what kind of proceeds can you take away from your house right now? Um, where can you put them, you know, into other options a down payment on a next house an investment property that's the other thing that switched a lot is i'm you know i have pivoted and there's less buyers out looking there's less people actively selling but we're doing all the prep work so it's a ton of prep work meetings um right. a ton of people that are going to be out in the market you know may june hopefully um and then it's a lot of investors too just kind of thinking about how can i you know leverage these lower rates and buy up some properties now when my money can go so much further. Yeah. Right. So what, what is your biggest tip um, as far as investment? I know, uh, so this question uh, from AJ, so who's working, um, but he's looking to, looking to invest. I mean, you talk first time home buyer. Um, I know you and I have talked about this as well. Right. Uh, is now the time to, for example, be buying, I don't know, a condo or, or a town home um, 
and renting out other rooms. Is that a good investment? And if that's the route to go, I mean, I know we have a very um, up and down stock market right now. Is real mm -hmm. estate um, the best bet for uh, investment? And really, I, I mean, I'm personally, I'm all about ROI, um, return on my investment uh, for right. sure. Right. And that's, yes. Um, you know, I, I bought a larger townhouse. My plan is to keep it and rent it out when I buy a single family house. So I think there's two types of investors and I kind of talk with people about what type of investor are you wanting to be? There's people that want to buy their first home smartly so that they can keep it and rent it out and hopefully, you know, utilize that equity and leverage that to keep it, rent it, buy your next house. You know, you're kind of forever home in a single family house or if you get married or whatever the case is. So there's that type of investor where they basically want very little risk. They want to be able to afford both payments and know that if they don't have a renter in that townhouse, they can cover both, but they also want it to be basically covered 99% of the time unless there's a month that they have that holding cost or that mortgage payment to flip a renter, a new renter into it. Um, so for those people, I would just say yes, you know, it's really nice to get in when the interest rates are low. Um, if you're already in something like that, you can always refinance when the interest rates are low and then buy your next house now and take advantage of it that way. So the big thing is just, you know, when the rates are low is a really good time to do that because the lower the rate, the lower the payment, the more you're going to make cash flow wise. You know, if you're paying an $800 payment, mortgage payment, and you're charging $1,200 rent, you have, you know, $400 of cash flow every month from that. Um, then there's investors where it's a lot more in depth and they're looking at, you know, buying 10, 15, 20 properties. And it's, it's riskier because you're basically leveraging against the equity that you have in other properties. Um, but it's also like, it's a very good way to build wealth if you're working with the right people and you're understanding the risk versus reward and you're buying smart properties. My thing with that is I'm very blunt. I have shown a lot of investors the past few weeks and you know done virtual tours for them and i'll just say this is a bad investment like they'll want to buy it and i'm like i wouldn't buy this because like you don't have that one percent there's the one percent rule which basically says if you buy a house for a hundred thousand dollars for example you should be able to rent it out for a thousand um then right the, yeah so yeah, good to know. I, and the idea idea is with a cap rate, I mean, a cap rate is basically, it's your capitalization rate. So you basically take, you know, whatever you're going to make a month. So if you're going to make a thousand dollars a month off of a property, um, you take that times 12. So you're making 12,000 a year. You take out your yearly expenses, you know, so if you had $2,000 in taxes, you take that out. You're at 10. If you had $700 insurance, you take that out. You're at 11 and some change. And then you divide that by the sale price. So you divide that by a hundred thousand. If you paid a hundred thousand for it, and then, you know, you're probably going to have around, you know, a seven to 9% cap rate, depending on what those taxes, insurance, you know, whatever you're paying yearly, if you're paying a management company to um, manage it, whatever. So you're, you know, all your expenses, overall, your income, and then you divide by the sale price and that gives us the cap rate, which is essentially your rate of return. So at the end of the day, make sure your cap rate is similar to, if not higher than what you could get in the market over time. <laughs> um, you know, but there's also something to be said for like, I've had people buy a property at a 7% cap rate, you know, which is less than um, what you would get in the market over 10 years normally, but it's, real estate is more stable. Like what's happening to the market right now versus what's happening to real estate. You have to be smart about it, but people always need a place to live. So it's just be smart about it. And with those people that are really looking to make this kind of, you know, I have, I have a couple of people where they're probably going to be 45 and be able to retire and just live off their investment properties. And those people, there's a lot more planning that goes into it. And that's why this is a really good time to plan because to make sure i need to turn off that i'm sorry um, <laughs> no worries it just, it just means that market is hot so obviously if you want to buy a home you know who to contact kelsey russell yeah, i've just i've just had too many zoom calls to figure out how to turn <laughs> off the dang dingy thing but um big things if you're looking at investments like the the biggest things to do is like do all your homework and be prepared now if you want to buy a property a year down the line, you know, cause maybe right. it'll spend in six months that you love and it's a great investment and people are, people don't want to, I guess my point is if you don't want to pay the yearly cost to hold an LLC, 
like an LLC, if you get it set up by an attorney, it's like $500. If you do it yourself, it's like $50 form online. You know, I used an attorney just because I wanted to make sure everything was, you know, good to go across my eyes, dot my teeth. But um, it's get your LLC set up, talk with a realtor about, you know, what is my current current portfolio look like? What do I want my portfolio to look like? And then set expectations because so many people see, you know, HGTV and the returns there and this, you know, we glamorized and renovated <laughs> an entire house for ten thousand dollars and we got twenty, you know, we but can't be Chip and Joe. No, we can't be Chip and Joe. And so that's like you're, a lot you're of breaking money. me, Kelsey. You're breaking me. I know. A lot of my meetings I feel like are just breaking, you know, bad news to people and being like the bearer of bad news because it's like real estate investment is not it's not a perfect world where everything's going to get you a 10% return and be great. You know, you need yeah. to decide. I always tell people like, let's sit down and set expectations for you. So I know what to send you because a lot of people want to be a real estate investor, but really they only want the perfect little townhouse with, you know, a 10% cap rate and no maintenance and nothing to fix. And I just want to worry about getting a renter in there and I'm done, which is fine. I have people like that, right. but I also have people that, you know, they want to buy, foreclosures and short sales and they have to understand that it's sold as is it's your responsibility mm -hmm. to turn on the utilities if you do in a pipe burst you're liable for that so you have to have a lot of cash on hand you have to have a lot of trust in you know our it our vendors or yours if you are bringing your own um you have to trust they're going to show up they're going to do the work on time so you're not going to have holding costs for three months you know so there's a lot of conversations that have to be had expectations that need to be set in order for you to be ready to you know make a split second one day decision on an investment property which is what's needed because if it's a good deal there's 40 other investors in Des Moines that are going to want to buy it oh so, yeah there's a lot a lot of just like work to do on the front end um knowing your numbers I have a page on my website that I can post on this, just kind of going through all the numbers, all the ways to yep. make money in real estate. Um, you know, you have your cash flow, which would be whatever you're making over the mortgage payment monthly. You have your appreciation. So how much value the property gains over time, just based on the assessed value and the appraised value. Um, right, right. You, there's so many different ways you can do some, there are some tax advantages, um, 1040, 1031 exchanges. There's all these different things. Um, and at the end of the day, just know your numbers, set expectations of what you want. So you actually can buy them in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, Jamie is watching. Hi, Jamie. I hope you're staying warm in Des Moines. Uh, we love you as well. Um, so are there, she wants to know, are there certain areas, uh, if we were looking specifically in Des Moines, um, lots of viewers on here, um, Des Moines and, um, as far as, so Number one city for young professionals, um, rapidly, rapidly growing uh, metro area, best areas to um, invest, new, flipper, uh, different suburbs, Waukee, Norwalk, uh, right. all, Bondurant is growing too with Amazon coming in. Uh, yeah. What are you seeing? I mean, as even as buying, I mean, I guess for first time home buyers, um, right. as well, not just investing. So totally dependent on your goals. First off, if this is Jamie Elrod, I can't see. Is it Jamie Elrod? Jamie Horvath. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. We love Jamie Elrod too. <laughs> so. Jamie Elrod. I was gonna say with Jamie Elrod, she is actually with CCS Homes and does all of their like design stuff. And I'm doing a custom build with them right now for one of my clients, and they have been amazing. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Jamie and to CCS Homes because they're great. They work really well with the buyers and kind of really make it, you know, your home, your way, I think is their tagline and they live by it. So, um, and then Jamie Horbach, I love you too. Um, yeah, I love you too. We thank you for lobbying on behalf of all realtors I, in the state of Iowa. Yeah. Uh, Jamie, so she's, the, she's the governmental for, affairs coordinator for YPN, um, or for all of DMAR, the Des Moines Association of Realtors. And Jamie literally just, she is on top of everything all the time and always informing people, always lifting people up. So I love her. Um, but what was her question? Sorry. Um, oh, <laughs> as far as in the metro area, um, oh, in recommendations, what are you seeing um, kind of in the suburbs? I know Ankeny is booming. Waukee right. is opening a new high school. Um, right. Times is getting Amazon, Bondurant um, right. as well. Where should we be looking? Hell, downtown is booming too. Right. Yes. 
Um, it depends on what you're buying. If you're buying something for you and um, so Des Moines has the highest taxes normally, Des Moines proper. So, and you kind of have to look at what's desirable schools wise. Some people really like to have a little more diversity and be in Des Moines. Um, some people want to be in a suburb. Um, and I mean, I grew up in Ankeny. My parents made me go to Ankeny and that's all they wanted to be in, you know? So <laughs> that is, it's really dependent on, you know, where you're at in your life stage. If you're a young single person that wants to just have you know, a nice little house. A lot of people look at Beaverdale. If you want to have a townhouse, a lot of people look at Grimes, Johnston, Bondurant, have a lot of good options for townhouses, Ankeny to mm -hmm. Waukee, really anything. Um, if you're an investor, you probably want to be in Des Moines for single family because anything on the outskirts, basically, if you're wanting to stay at a, like a lower price point, 200 and under, you need to be in either Des Moines proper for single family or probably in a townhouse situation outside of that. Like we find exceptions to that all the time, but if you find anything under 200 in a suburb that's in great condition, buy it. <laughs> you know, if that's what you're looking for because it's gonna go really quickly or, you know, at least get out and look at it that day. Um, I'm really good about if you're looking at kind of that under 200 range in a suburb, it rarely pops up. Like we just closed on one this morning and we had looked for she was pretty picky, but I, you know, I knew exactly what she was looking for and we had looked for a long time. So they just go really quickly. Um, if you're above that 200, 250, you can pretty much be anywhere. Um, you wouldn't probably find those in Des Moines proper and you wouldn't necessarily want to buy them in Des Moines proper. You know, each house is totally right. different. If you're south of Grand, you're going to be at a much higher price point and people will always pay for it there. So the long story short answer to that is it totally depends on your goals. Um, Bondurant, Adele have some good tax abatements. So if you're looking at a lower payment, make sure you kind of look at where the tax abatements are available. Um, especially want, if you want a new build house under 250, you're probably going to need to be in Bondurant, Altoona, Norwalk. Those are kind of your hot spot areas. That, um, but yeah, it just depends on your goals. Make sure that if you have a tax abatement, you're working with a realtor and a lender that are going to tell you what your payment is going to be after that tax abatement is over and your taxes kick in because it's going to be probably four hundred dollars higher a month mm -hmm. so yeah just lots of things to consider based on your goals yeah for sure so um i know chad is on here um uh, and chad is in california so as far as a realtor um i guess talk a little bit about um, the network that you build uh, across the nation if um because you have a lot of viewers um, from all over the country um uh, what should they know how do they work with realtors uh do you have recommendations as far as putting them all into contact um yeah so i have a pretty good network of people kind of all over so if you see this and you have liked what i said and you want kind of a referral to someone i can definitely offer that um as far as the market in general the des moines market you know, is very affordable compared to other markets. Like I have a friend that has about a $250,000 house here and you'd probably pay three times that for the same thing in Denver, for example. So that's one thing like comparison wise to know is our market is very affordable. Um, if you're looking at investments, I would say consider a realtor that you trust in a more affordable market. You know, if you're looking to do it, it's just an extra house to have cash flow on, you can absolutely work with someone like local and buy local, but I have a lot of people where, you know, they live in Detroit or they live in Laguna Beach and they want to invest in Des Moines because they like Des Moines return because our, our properties are so much more affordable. So that's something to kind of think about is looking at, you know, what are the most affordable markets? What markets are you getting the best return on if you want to go into real estate investing in the future? Um, overall, the market has been pretty strong. I just saw um, I actually had a client send me a very cool, um, insightful link on construction material costs because I had looked into some of that for them. And they actually, you know, her husband's very savvy with markets and everything. And she sent me a link yesterday morning that was really interesting. They were talking about, you know, construction material prices all over um, the country and how lumber was expected to go up 3% this year. And thus far, as of mid March, it's gone down. I don't know the number, 11%. Yeah, down 11.5% this year. So, you know, there you're seeing a 13% decrease, essentially, you know, a 10% decrease. Um, and they thought it was going to go up 3%. So what does that mean? You know, if you're looking at building a house, it means that the materials that they thought were going to get more expensive are actually getting less expensive with this crisis. Right. 
Um, and with oil prices dropping, the transportation prices are getting a lot cheaper. So, you know, there are some things like architectural coatings, things like that have gone up maybe a little more than expected, but probably pretty steady. Um, but overall construction prices are going down for materials and for transportation, which is huge. I mean, cause I think a lot of people are scared that, you know, or we're really strongly pe pressing pause that we're thinking about building a home or, you know, we're under contract for a home and they're getting scared that the builder is going to change pricing. Um, the big thing there, again, work with people you trust because I would never suggest anyone to do a cost plus build right now, which basically means, you know, you have X amount of costs, you have X amount of initial down payment, maybe it's $50,000 on, you know, a $500,000 house. And then you basically pay the invoices as you go. Whereas a more standard build route would be, you know, you have the builder buys the lot, carries the construction loan throughout the whole process, pays all of the draws. And this is kind of in depth, but pays all the draws. And at the end of the day, you just have an end loan like any other consumer. So if you were to buy a resale house, you would just have your one conventional end loan. And that's the way most builders do it. And you just write up a purchase agreement for X amount. And that's what you're paying. And you agree on the front end cost plus. Plus you pay those invoices throughout. So you have no idea what your end price is going to be. And even though prices are lower right now, that is something I would never recommend because there's so much volatility in every market that, I mean, I had people, I had two people that were basically had said they wanted to do cost plus And I was like, no, we need to do a conventional normal build or you need to not build right now, you know, because there's just so much uncertainty okay. with it. And that's ultimately their choice. Like I'm never going to force anyone to take my advice, but I wouldn't do it. So I'm always going to advise on something if it's something I would not do. Yeah. Yeah. Which is uh, really great. I mean, really, really, really great. Um, so for sure, um, I guess best way to, um, I guess, get in touch with you. I know um, I tagged your Russell real estate page uh, for anyone who's looking in the Des Moines market um, as well. And um, I know we definitely could talk a whole lot more. So would love yeah. to have you back. Yeah. Uh, I think the conversation on investing turning your home into Airbnbs, first time home buying, all of that. Um, like I said, Kelsey is best realtor in Des Moines for a reason. So reach out to her. I'm so glad that with all the binging, um, I was still able to steal about 30 minutes of your time. So thank you so much for all of your knowledge, wisdom, and um, continue to stay busy, stay well, healthy, sanitizing all those homes. So thank you so much. And uh, really glad that I could have you. So thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'll just say if anyone wants to, um, you know, if, if you have questions on anything, I'm a phone call away and it's just, it's really good to talk through whatever the situation is. That's what most of my time has been, you know, the past three weeks is just talking to people about what their questions are, what their next steps are, even if they're three years out, you know, it's like, just do the right things now so that you're in the best situation when it is your time to make a move or invest or make a decision. So yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Kelsey. Really, really appreciate it. Um, thanks so much for joining on Financial Freedom Friday. Uh, we will be ba back next week um, talking about health and life insurance because um, April is Financial Literacy Awareness Month. So can you believe it's been like a year since we kicked off the financial literacy? And you, I know, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, crazy. So Kelsey spoke last year um, and it's crazy that it's already been a year. So mm -hmm. great relationship, great network. And so glad to have you back this year. Thanks, so, Peter. Thank you so much. Have a great Friday. Bye.